Hey guys, welcome to another exciting and informative video from How Is It Made? In this video today, we will show you how the super cool spacesuits are made for space travel. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss a video from us. That said, let's begin. Spacesuits are made with a purpose. The only purpose behind making of the spacesuit is for protection. It can protect astronauts from extreme temperatures. Spacesuits provide oxygen for astronauts to breathe in the vacuum of space. In addition, it can also protect astronauts from space radiation. The spacesuit even has sun visors to protect the astronauts' eyes from bright sunlight. Well, as a matter of fact, astronauts need spacesuits to survive. They can only hold on for 15 seconds without wearing a spacesuit. The person will suffocate to death. Otherwise, they'll freeze. If there's still air in the astronauts' lungs, they will rupture. History of Spacesuits With the technological advancement in the fields of materials, electronics, and fibers, Spacesuits have naturally developed. In the early days of the space program, spacesuits were made for all astronauts. These are much simpler than today's suits. In fact, the suit worn by Alan Shepard in the United States for the first time in the suborbital track was just a pressure suit adapted from the pressure suit of the U.S. Navy's high-altitude jet aircraft. The suit has only two layers, and it's difficult for the pilot to move his arms or legs. The next generation of spacesuits is designed to prevent astronauts from decompressing in an orbiting spacecraft. However, it's impossible to wear these suits for spacewalks because they cannot withstand the harsh space environment. These suits consist of five layers. The layer closest to the body is white cotton underwear with accessories for biomedical equipment. Next is the blue nylon layer that provides comfort. On top of the blue nylon, this layer is a pressurized black neoprene coated nylon layer. This stores oxygen in the matter of cabin pressure breakdown. The next layer of PTFE maintains the shape of the suit when pressurized, and the last layer is a white nylon material to reflect sunlight and prevent accidental damage. During the first spacewalk during the Gemini mission of 1965, a seven-layer spacesuit was used to provide additional protection. The additional layer is composed of aluminized polyester film, which provides more thermal protection and micrometeoroid protection. The total weight of these protective clothing is 33 pounds, although they are sufficient for some problems associated with them. For example, the mask on the helmet quickly fogs up, which hinders vision. In addition, the gas cooling system is not sufficient because it cannot remove excessive heat and moisture quickly enough. Sally Ride is best known for being the first American woman to be sent into outer space. As a scientist and professor, she served as a researcher at the International Security and Arms Control Center of Stanford University, a member of Apple Computer's Board of Directors, and a director of the Institute of Space Research and a professor of physics at the University of California, San Diego. This cycling choice is mainly for children to write articles about space travel and exploration. Sally Christie Ride is Dale Burdell and Carol Joyce Ride of Encino, California. The eldest daughter was born on May 26, 1951. As the author Karen O'Connor described in her book, Sally Ride in the New by Young Readers, the Tomboy Rider. When she was only five years old, she participated in the sports section of the newspaper with her father. As an active, adventurous, but also educated family, when Sally was nine years old and her sister Karen was seven years old, Reed One family traveled in Europe for a year. Although Karen was inspired to become a pastor, in the spirit of her parents, Reed's own evolving taste for exploration eventually made her apply for the space program almost on a whim. I don't know why I did this, she confessed to Newsweek before starting her first space flight. Since the year she started her job search was the first time NASA opened its space program to job seekers since the late 1960s. This opportunity was accidental, and it was the first time that women would not be excluded from consideration. This flight became one of 35 people selected from 8,000 applicants in 1978. Why I was selected is still a mystery, she later admitted to John Grossman in a health interview in 1985, stating, None of us has been told. Subsequently, at the age of 31, this trip will be the youngest person to be sent into orbit, the first American woman to enter space, the first American woman to fly twice in space, and coincidentally, the first astronaut to marry another active astronaut. Responsibility. However, Ryder left NASA in 1987 for the International Security and Arms Control Center at Stanford University. Two years later, she became the director of the California Institute for Space Research and a professor of physics at the University of California, San Diego. The Apollo mission uses a more complex suit to solve some of these problems. During the moonwalk, the astronaut wore a seven-layered suit with life support backpack. The total weight is approximately 57 pounds or 26 kilograms. For the space shuttle mission, 
NASA introduced an extravehicular maneuver unit or EMU. This is a spacesuit designed for spacewalks and doesn't need to be connected to the orbiter, whereas one of the foremost varieties of these spacesuits is that they're produced for application by multiple astronauts, somewhat then customized like previous spacesuits. Over the past 20 years, EMUs have undergone steady improvements, but they still look the same as when the Space Shuttle program began in 1981. Currently, EMU has 14 layers of protection and weighs more than 275 pounds. The manufacturing process of a spacesuit. The manufacture of spacesuits is a complicated process. It can be divided into two production stages. Build each component first. The parts are then assembled together at the main manufacturing location. The general process is outlined below. Helmet and sun visor assembly. Helmets and face shields can be manufactured using traditional blow molding techniques. The polycarbonate pellets are loaded into the injection molding machine. They are melted and pressed into a cavity that's roughly the same size and shape as the helmet. When the cavity is opened, the main part of the helmet is formed. A connection device is added to the open end to fix the helmet on the hard upper torso. Before the helmet is packaged and shipped, the ventilation distribution pad is added together with the perch valve. The sun visor assembly is also equipped with headlights and communication equipment. Life Support System the life support system is combined in multiple steps. All components are installed on the outer backpack shell. First, the pressurized oxygen tank is filled, capped, and placed in the housing. The carbon dioxide removal equipment is assembled together. This usually involves a filter tank filled with lithium hydroxide, which is connected to a hose. And then the backpack is equipped with a ventilation fan system, power supply, radio, warning system, and water cooling equipment. When fully assembled, the life support system can be directly connected to the rigid upper body. Control Module The key components of the control module are built in a separate unit and then assembled. This modular approach allows for easy repair of critical components when necessary. The control module installed on the chest contains all electronic controls, digital displays, and other electronic interfaces. The primary perch valve is also added to this section. Cooling Clothes The cooling suit is worn in the pressure layer. It's composed of nylon, spandex fiber, and a liquid cooling tube. Nylon warp knitting was the first to cut into long underwear. At the same time, the spandex fibers are woven into a piece of fabric and cut into the same shape. And then the spandex is fitted with a series of cooling tubes, which are then stitched together with a nylon layer. Then connect the front zipper and the connector used to connect to the life support system. Upper body and lower body. The lower torso, arm components, and gloves are made in a similar way. The layers of synthetic fibers are woven together and then cut into suitable shapes. The connecting ring is connected at the end and connects to various parts. Each finger of the glove is equipped with a microheater and is covered with an insulating pad. The rigid upper body is forged with a combination of glass fiber and metal. It has four openings for connecting the lower torso component, two arms, and the helmet. In addition, an adapter has been added where the life support package and the control module can be connected. Final assembly. All parts are shipped to NASA for assembly. This is done on the ground and the protective clothing can be tested before being used in space. That's it guys. Let's know if you found this video informative in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. See you in the next video.